Good morning, everyone. Everybody has on their pink this morning for Breast Awareness Month. And I think I have some pink on. I'm kind of colorblind a little bit, but I believe I have some pink here. So I, so I guess I'm okay. All right. And those that uh, did not wear pink today, just um, we'll see. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to see how much money we're going to put in the plate, maybe $5 a person that does not have on pink today. Okay, and we'll give that um, that collection plate to uh, Sister Mary, so, so, so she'll collect that money in of uh, service today. But anyway, welcome the members, um, I welcome those who are visiting, uh, those guests and those streaming online this morning. Um, it is a blessed day today. If you will, open your Bibles and turn them to Psalms, excuse me, Proverbs 22, and we will read verses 10 through 21. Proverbs 22, verses 10 through 21. Let us pray. Eternal and everlasting God, our Father who art in heaven, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your many blessings, the Lord. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your precious grace, your last mercy, your brown and love, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we ask you to, to be with us this morning, dear Lord, and pour out your anointing on us, dear Lord. And we receive your anointing in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, your love, your joy, your peace, your gentleness, your goodness, your meekness, your faithfulness, and your self-control, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we ask you to bless us, bless us individually and all together. Bless us when we go out, bless us when we come in, dear Lord. We ask you to bless us in our country, Heavenly Father, in our neighborhoods, our communities, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless our homes, our storehouses. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless and prosper everything that we touch. We ask you to have our enemies to come in in one direction, but to flee from us in seven directions, because great are you who is in us, the he that is in this world, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we offer ourselves to you this morning as living sacrifices, we choose not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds, dear Lord. And we pray that you will show us your will and enable us to live in your will, dear Lord. And dear Lord, we ask you to continue to be with those that are, that are out sick, dear Lord. Be our brother Dave, Heavenly Father, our brother Akbar, and all those, dear Lord, that are sick, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us, Sister Woods, as she travel. Heavenly Father, give her traveling grace. Mm -hmm. And Heavenly Father, we, we ask you to be with our ministers, dear Lord. Our brother Dave and our brother Dennis, dear Lord, continue to give them the heart to speak that word and to be, uh, to be sp and, and speak boldly, dear Lord, what thus say the Lord. Heavenly Father, we, we ask you to, to be with those that are, that are elderly, dear Lord, and continue to be with them, dear Lord, give them strength and comfort, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we, we ask you to restore in each of us, dear Lord, the joy of your salvation. And fill our hearts with joy and let the fruits of your love and the peace of your spirit overflow in our lives, dear Lord, and make us better people, better Christians, dear Lord. And Heavenly Father, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, forgive us for those transgressions that we have committed in this body. Make us strong for we're weak. Build us up on every leaning side, every leaning side dear Lord. And dear Lord, we thank you for your word, for your word is a lamp unto our feet and light to our path. In Christ's name we do pray, dear Lord. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 22, start verse 10. Drive out the mocker, and out goes strife. Quarrels and insults are ended. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he frustrates the words of the unfaithful. The mouth of an adulterous woman is a deep pit. A man who is under the Lord's wrath falls into it. One who oppresses the poor to increase his wealth, and one who gives gifts to the rich, both come to poverty. For it is pleasing when you keep them in your heart and have all of them ready on your lips. Your 
Have I not written 30 sayings for you, saying of counsel and knowledge? Number 21, all together, teaching you to be honest and to speak the truth so that you bring back truthful reports to those you serve. May the Lord bless you, and doors of his holy divine word. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Our first election this morning will be hymn number 565, 565. I'm sorry about that. I had it. Uh, Six forty-six. I'm sorry. Six forty-six. Just a little talk with Jesus. Have a little sing. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It raised my heart in love. And wrote my name above. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes it whole. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about trouble. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Feel the crowd for yearning. The heaven is turning. Our little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my past seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. Mists of sin may rise. And hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears away. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our trouble. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. A little prayer for journey, heart unto heaven is turning. A little talk with Jesus makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, I be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day. And I, I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our trouble. Hear our faintest cry, answer by and by. Feel the prayer for yearning, heart unto heaven is turning. Our little talk with Jesus makes it right. Four eighty four. Four hundred and eighty four. <clears throat> we got it. Let us sing. 
Trials all dog on every hand, and we cannot understand all the way that God will lead us to that blessed promised land. But he'll guide us with his eyes. And we'll follow till we die. We will understand it better by and by. Singing by and by. Oh, when the morning comes, you know that all the Things are God or gathering home. We will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. We are all sun desert to all the things that lie demand. One the shelter and the food, thirsty hills and barren land. But we'll trust in, in the law. And according to his word, we will understand it better by and by, singing by and by. Oh, when the morning comes, you know that all things are God a gathering home. We will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better by and by. Temptation heals us now, often take us unaware, and our hearts are made to bleed, for it thoughtless word indeed, and we'll wonder why the tears when we try to do our best, but we'll understand it better by and by, singing by and by. Oh, when the morning come, you know that all the things are God to gather in home. We will tell the story how we overcome. We will understand it better. I am God. Good morning. The scripture this morning will be taken from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 61, I read verses 1, 2, and 3. That's the book of Isaiah 61, verses 1, 2, and 3. And reads as follows. The spirit of the Lord God is upon, us, is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captive, 
and freedom to prisoners, to proclaim the favorability year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the manner of praise instead of spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. All wise and everlasting Father, the Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Father, the one that said, Peace be still. Well, then, Father, we come to you this morning, Father, with bow our heads and humble hearts. Thank you, Father, for so many wonderful and bountiful blessings. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you allow us to just open our eyes to see another Lord's day. Father, we thank you for, for the opportunity to come before your throne of grace and mercy. Pour out our heart to you, O Heavenly Father, and we know you, you will answer. Father, we come to you at this time praying for those that don't know thee at this hour. Give them a little more space and a little more time to come to know thee for everlasting and turn too late. Father, we pray at this time for this congregation here at East Montgomery, Church of Christ. Pray, Father, for the membership. Pray for the, the preachers. Father, we pray for Brother Dave as he goes through some type of illness this morning, Father. We pray that you bring him back to the normal health and strength to be that will. Amen. We pray for Brother Dennis as he come before us this morning, Father, to bring unto us the bread of life. Amen. Pray that you continue to bless him, Father, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Amen. Pray for uh, Sister Ellis. Continue to be, pray for her as she continues to be by his side and continue to encourage him, Father. Amen. Pray for this uh, membership, Father. We pray that we continue to love and cherish one another, Father as you have loved us. Father, forgive us our many sins, because we know there are many. Just continue to cleanse us with your darling son and redeeming blood. Father, we have to pray for this world, eh, Lord, Father, so much going on in this world, Father. Pray for the situation over there in Israel and, and Gaza Strip, Father. Pray for those uh, families that have lost everything, lost lives, Father. But we know that you are still in charge, Father. And thank you that you are still in charge. Father, we pray uh, that you continue to give us the things that we stand in need of, Father, because uh, we don't know, but you know what we need. Thank you for our health, Father. Thank you for food, clothing, and shelter, a lot of things that we take for granted, Father, but we just want to say thank you. Father, we continue to pray for our young uh, adults and our youth, Father. Pray that they keep their eyes on Jesus. Keep their eyes on the Lord, Father. Don't, don't worry about what the world has to offer out there. That's, let them keep their eyes on the Lord, Father. Father, we pray that uh, we continue to uh, show love not only for uh, this congregation, Father, but show love for those that don't know thee. Show, for, show love for those that are out there in the world, Father, that they can see you living in us on a daily basis, Father. Continue to pray for those uh, that are sick, and those that may be going through their hour of bereavement, Father. We pray that you would comfort them. We know that death is a bitter pill to swallow, Father, but we all got to go that way. Father, we pray at right, this time on behalf of, of Sister Woods as she travel, Father. Continue to give her traveling grace there and traveling grace back, Father, without any hurt, harm, and danger. Pray for Brother Woods also, Father. Continue to bless him in a special way. Father, we pray that uh, we always uh, seek thee for, for answers, not, not the world. Let us seek you for all, all the answers that uh, we, have, we, we need, Father, because we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us, Father. Father, we pray uh, as we go into the furthering of this worship service this morning, Father, forgive us our many sins and our shortcomings. And we pray, Father, that uh, everything that we do, we bring glory to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Let's notice him number... 666. 666.
troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now it's at stake. Humble your heart to God, save from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrim truck, rest and subway. My Jesus is come to me in soon the morning or night. Oh, noon and many will meet. Oh, their dooms and trumpets will sound. Ah, and all of the dead shall rise, righteous meet him. The sky ain't going where no. One night, heaven abound. Love of so many come, losing their home of gold. And this in God's word is told, and evil abound. When all has come, to pass near in the end, at last, and if we come then, we pass, trumpets will sound. My Jesus is come, may hang soon the morning or night, or night or noon, and men it will be. Make the drums and trumpets will sound. I'm all of the dead shall arise, righteous meet in the sky, going where no one has heaven above. Trouble will soon be whole. Happy forevermore when we meet on that shore, pray from all care, rising up in the sky and telling this world goodbye and home where we then shall fly. Glory to share. My Jesus is come, maying soon the morning or night, night or noon, a minute will meet. The drums and trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the sky and going where no, no one does heaven above. Good morning, the Lord has the morning. We are the morning we're going to change up. We're going to change up to page 118. Because this past week seemed like a whole lot of people stole a whole lot of stones at me. And because, because, of, because of this church, I passed the test. So I'm going to sing this song this morning. The Lord our rock in him we hide, he is shut in a time of storm. No Savior ever be thee down, a shut in a time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Jesus is a rock in a weary land. He's a shade in the time of storm. I'll 
to say bad day, the fifth bad night, or shouting of time or storm. No fear from no more friends. I'll shout the end of time, my storm. Oh, Jesus, it's a rock in a weary land. It's a weary land. Oh, to Jerry land. Oh, Jesus, it's a rock in a weary land. Oh, Jesus, it's a the end of time, my storm. The racing storm around the beat. <coughs> our shelter in a time of storm. We'll never leave our safe feet. Our shelter in a time of storm. Oh, Jesus is a rock in a weary land. Oh, weary. Shut the end of time or stone. Oh, Rob D. Man, oh, refugee. I shut the end of time or stone. Be thou help I shut the end of time or stone. Oh, Jesus, is the rock in a weary land. Oh, weary land. Oh, dear to welcome all of you to the East Montgomery Church of Christ and those of you who are visiting with us you are our honored guests we're glad that you decided to come our way and sister Woods is traveling uh, today but she's traveling because of death in the family and so we have a uh, sympathy card here, so 
um, if you don't mind, please sign it. And, and if Sister Woods is watching today, then we want to wish her a safe travel and our deepest condolences. Now, if you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, and we will continue uh, from last Sunday evening, I believe. And we talked a little bit concerning the test is not over. God tests man in the beginning, and God is still testing man today. We need to be aware of the tests so that when the finals come, amen, we want to be prepared. Now, I know that just uh, like school, there are going to be some who don't care anything about a test. If they can squeeze a D, right. right. they're going to be all right. But just for the record, this is not that kind of test. This, is, this test right here is a pass or fail. There are no grades. You either pass or you fail. One of the things that God has tasked me to do, he laid on my heart to do, and that is to tell you the truth. I'm crazy enough to tell it whether you like it or not, I tell it. And I strive to tell it just like it is. One of the things that God would have his men to do is to warn his people. We see it throughout the Old Testament. God wanted his prophets to go and warn the people. Sometimes they got stoned. Sometimes they got killed. But they went as God commanded them to go. I might get killed today with words. I might get killed today with looks. You might kill me with private thoughts, but that's all right. God said, go, so I'm going to go. And I will confront you and tell you that you ought not have done that because that's what God wants me to do. But this morning, I want to remind you that the test is not over. I believe it's safe to say that Adam's first test was one of intelligence and wisdom, which he passed with flying colors. Notice that Adam named all the animals, but he didn't name any of them after himself. Interesting. But when he, when he got to woman, he named her after himself. To me, this is a sign of his intelligence and his wisdom. Each name had a great significance. And this name, among other things, pointed to their compatibility. This name that he gave her pointed to their compatibility. Because before all the animals that passed before him, there was not found. Uh, help me suitable. But by virtue of her name, it's, easily, it's easy to tell that she was compatible. She was suitable. Well, man's next test is one we're all familiar with. Two, chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. God commanded man before a woman was created not to eat of the fruit that was in the midst of the garden making it ultimately his responsibility. However, the woman knew the prohibition and understood that she too was not permitted to eat. She saw the tree, isn't that right? 
uh, that the tree was pleasant to the eye. Now, that's what Genesis 3, 6 says. Isn't that right? Well, all the trees were pleasant to the eyes. Genesis chapter 2, verse 9. Genesis 2, 9. All the trees was pleasant to the sight. Now, while they were alone, and we don't know how long they were alone by themselves, they both were obedient to God. But when someone else came along with ill intent, there was a chain reaction, wasn't there? You see, the devil influenced the woman, and the woman influenced her husband, and then all, everything went upside down, didn't it? We need to take note of this and learn from it. I got to say it again. We need to take note of this and learn from it. We have to be very careful today because this is one of humanity's greatest weakness. The power of influence, particularly to do wrong. It's no wonder Paul said in Galatians 5, 7 through 9, you were running well. You were doing good. Who hindered you? Who cut you off? Who stepped in among you? Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who calls you a little leaven. Leaven's the whole lump. We have to be careful today with the people that we associate with. Remember that God created us to be social beings. You know, that's why he said it's not good for man to what? It's not good for man to be alone. No man is, a, is an island. And so we were created to be sociable people. It's only natural that we are influenced by others. But we must take care to know the kind of people we associate with because, believe it or not, some people don't mean you any good. Yeah. Satan didn't mean Adam any good. And he definitely didn't mean the woman any good. And so we need to remember that and we need to be careful about the people we associate with, people we call friends. Now, you know the title of the lesson is This Test Is Not Over. Here's something that might just blow your mind. I know you know it already, but have you thought about the implications of the statement that I'm about to make? Are you ready? We, we talked about the beginning. God placed the tree. In the midst of the garden, right? Now, what was the name of that tree? It was the tree of the knowledge of good and what? Evil. Isn't that right? Well, it's going to blow your mind. Satan didn't put that tree there. God put the tree there. The tree of knowledge. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God put it there. Now, let me tell you something. God didn't just know the possibility and the probability of man eating that fruit. He didn't just know the possibility. and the, He knew it was going to happen. Otherwise, he wouldn't be all-knowing. So why did he put it there? Are you with me? Now, I'm going to blow your mind again. Some of us will say, he put it there to test man. Right, right. Well, that's fine and good. But if it was just a test, why the severe punishment? If it was just a test, 
Why did the woman have to bear children in pain and be subject to the man? And why did the man have to uh, go through this, this, this uh, hard labor to bring forth his meal? And, and, and lastly, why did the penalty have to be death? If it was just a test. Are y'all with me? Did I blow your mind yet? Let me blow a little bit more now. Y'all hold on. Get a little sip here. Well now. There's something that Satan said. That just sticks in my mind. And there's something that Jesus said. That just sticks in my mind. And so I just want to share that with you. Maybe because, you know, you might be a little smarter than I am with these things. And you go home and study and you can come back and give me an answer. Is that all right? Well, now. Notice what Satan said in three, Genesis 3, 5. He implies that in order to be like God, you have to know good and evil. Hmm? You know, in order to, to be a good liar, I shouldn't be telling y'all this, but <laughs> in order to be a good liar, you got to sprinkle a little truth in there. Otherwise, the lie would be obvious, and you ain't fooling nobody. Isn't that right? I think Satan sprinkled a little truth in his, in his cunningness. Because, see, when you go to John chapter 10 and verse 34, Jesus posed the question. He said, did I not say, or does the scripture not say, I said, ye are gods? That's with a small g now. Talking about us. Interesting, isn't it? Well, now, what if? I have to put a what if in there, because y'all don't want, y'all don't want to think, I don't want y'all to think that, you know, I'm preaching this as if though, you know, so I'll put a what if in there. What if the great test of man involves the idea that he must have a knowledge of good and evil, but must choose good in order to be a child of God? To be created in the image of God and to be like God, he must know good and evil, but he must choose good. To say that God put the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden is not an accusation against God. Understand, that that's not an accusation against God. You know why? Because God does whatever he wants. So I'm not saying that as an accusation against God. What I'm really getting at, and the point that I really want to press, is that uh, the idea that God had a purpose for putting the tree in the midst of the garden. And he knew man would eat. But watch this now. That purpose that God had and only he knows and only he knew, that purpose was for our benefit. Let me tell you, everything that God does is for our benefit. Even when we don't understand it. Because a lot of us are wondering right now why God had to take my loved one. Why God had to do this. Why am I suffering the way I do? Why was I born like this? Let me tell you something. Everything that God does is for your benefit. Because God so loved the world. We don't understand it. Now, that's why it is so, so very important for you to put your trust in God. Amen. You got to be able to say like Job said. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Though he slay me, yet will I put my trust in him. You got to trust him like that. You're not going to always understand how God operates. You're not going to always understand what he does. But if you put your trust in him, it doesn't matter. I know that no matter what I'm suffering through, no matter what I'm going through, no matter how hard it is, 
God got a blessing in that thing for me somewhere. There's a blessing in that song. I can't see it. And don't ask me to explain it. But my faith says, my trust in him says, oh, there's a blessing in there. Let me move on. One last thing before I move on. If it was a mere test, why was the penalty so severe? Now, we know Adam failed the test of obeying God because the day he ate that fruit was the day he died. At least that's what God said it would happen, right? The day you eat is the day you die. Well, did God change his mind or did we misunderstand that? Because we say he didn't die that day. And then, you know, we got a lot of people arguing about that and a lot of, you know, you know, a lot of different opinions on that thing. Isn't that right? Well, listen. There may be debates. There may be differences of opinion. But I believe what God meant can be seen in what transpired. What God could have meant was simply the day you eat of this fruit is the day ye cease to live forever. And not only that, but the day you eat the fruit will be the day you pass death upon all men. Hebrew 9, 27, it's appointed unto men. That appointment came through Adam or because of Adam. Well, now, then we move on to Abraham. You know, we talked a little bit about Abraham last time, but there's something I missed and want to, and want to go back and, and, and point out to you. All right, that all right? The thing I want to point out about Abraham is that he waited on God. Abraham waited on God. I can't say that it was easy. Huh? He had all kind of help that he didn't need. But as, the, as one of the sisters says, she was a help meet, right? Yeah, yeah I know I'm having a look. 25 long years he waited on God. Because of the promise that God made him. Isn't that right? Well, now, Sarah tried to run ahead of Abraham, tried to help him out. Well, maybe that's what a help me is supposed to do. Uh -uh. Help a husband out, amen? But I'm willing to wager you, if I was a betting man, I will, I'm willing to bet that. Uh, Savior was hoping that there was a little something in there for her. You see, Savior couldn't have children. She was barren. And, and, and this idea that she had was a plan for her to have children or a child through her maidservant. Well, y'all know the story. Isn't that right? Well, that's not what God had in mind. And that's not what God wanted. We should never try to hurry things alone, but always wait on the Lord. From the NIV, if you look at Habakkuk 2, 3, from the NIV it reads, Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not, and will not delay. You can't hurry God alone. You have to wait on the Lord. When you try to make it happen, it's not going to turn out right. Your best out is to wait on God. You know, Brother Ellis, I've been waiting for a wife for a long, long time. I don't, well, maybe God doesn't plan on giving you one. You ever thought about that? Ah, oh, Brother Ellis, I got to have one. I just, I can't have, I got to have one. No, you don't. I mean, if God doesn't have it in, in the plan for you, then you don't, you don't. Because God knows you're going to mess it up. That's why he ain't giving it to you. Amen? Somebody said, you know, I've been waiting on a husband for a long, long time. Well, if God doesn't give you one, maybe he got something better for you to do. 
You know, I can't do that. I got to have me a hug. Well, God says different. Twenty-five long years. Remember that sometimes what we really want may very well be what we shouldn't have. But the thing, the other thing I want to point out about Abraham is that because he, and this is the point, are you ready for this one? Because he waited on the Lord, even though he was up in age, God came to him with blessings beyond his wildest dream. He not only had Isaac, the child of promise, but six other sons. Huh? Did y'all know that? Abraham, after Sarah passed, had six other children. Oh, my God. Through his other wife, his concubine, by the name of Keturah, Gen uh, first, uh, Genesis 25, 1 and 2, and then uh, First Chronicles 1 Chronicles 1.32. First Chronicles 1.32 tell you that uh, Katara was his concubine. Wait a minute now. I thought Hagar was his concubine. Sure she was. That's who had Ishmael. Isn't that right? But nobody talks about Katara. She gave him six sons. Now, you know the Bible always lists the son, but it doesn't list the daughters, does it? So we don't know if he had daughters or not. Now, listen. Abraham, let's, let's, let's kind of go back a little bit here. Listen. If you love God, and put your trust in him, God going to love you back. There was no guarantee. There was no guarantee that God was going to give those blessings to Abraham. As a matter of fact, there was a point when he thought, that all his possessions were going to be left to his servant. You can find that in Genesis chapter 15, 1 through 3. Genesis 15, verses 1 through 3. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. You know, God make promises like that. But watch this. Abraham said, O oh, sovereign Lord. What can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus. God made these promises in Abraham like, well, Lord, I believe you, but I'm old. And you made these promises to me. You promised me a, a child and I ain't got him yet. And the person that's going to inherit my stuff is a slave, a servant in my household. He had no idea that God was going to bless him. And sometimes when you read what he told his servant, when he told his servant to go and, and, and find a wife for his son, Jacob. Remember, he, he, he told his servant, to. you get the idea that he was old and feeble right then. But now, if he was old and feeble, God must have thrown a second blessing in there on him. <laughs> Isn't that right? Because he had six children after that. Sarah is dead and gone. Now he has this concubine, and we don't know if he had the concubine uh, while Sarah was still living or not. The Bible doesn't say. He had Hagar while Sarah was still living. Why couldn't he have Katara? But the Bible doesn't say. And so some of us, some Bible students believe that he took on this, this concubine, one of the, one of the uh, uh, chief maid in his house. But I don't know, how they, get up, how they come up with all that, I don't know. But anyway, it's possible that she was one of the chief maids. And so he married her. And she's a concubine. 
you know. The fact that the Bible calls her a concubine kind of gives the indication that she was a second wife while Sabre was still living. Kind of that's that's what concubine kind of kind of means. It's a it's a lesser wife. But if your wife is dead and you marry again, she's not a second wife. She's 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 the one. First one is dead and gone. Now I'm the one. I just something for you to think about. Listen, Abraham had no idea what God had in store for him. You know, what's your, what's your point, Brother Ellis? When you wait on God and you put your trust in God, you have no idea what God has in store for you. Here's a man that said, I'm old, my wife is old, we passed the, the, the age of childbearing, and look, he got six more. You better be careful, Curtis. <laughs> you better be careful, son. <laughs> you don't know. I imagine Abraham was tickled to death. Ishmael had 12 sons himself. And they all was children of Abraham. When God said, I'm going to bless you with nation, he said, I'm going to make your seed like the stars in the heaven, like the sand of the sea. Oh, boy, look at here. Jacob had 12. Ishmael had 12. And God only knows how many of these had. Well, listen. Put your trust in God and wait on him. The test is not over. God is still testing man today. You know the greatest test? God has two tests. He has a test for the world to see if they will obey his word or not. The one message that God has for the world is to repent. Hear God's word. Believe it. Repent of your sins. Confess Jesus to be the son of God. Be baptized. Live faithful unto death. That's the message that God has for the world. That's the test. Jesus said on one occasion, no man can come to me except the father draws him. How do God draw people to himself? Isn't that an interesting question? Well, let me give you an interesting answer. God draws men and women to himself through his powerful word. Because the word of God is a living word. The Bible says quick and powerful. That word quick means living, active, live. God's word is a powerful word. By his word, the heavens were formed. By his word, word, just a word, everything came into existence. And it's by the word of God that you are either, you are either drawn to God or you run from God. And all this is through the powerful word of God. That's why God wants us to go out and spread it. Talk about it. Tell it. Preach it. Teach it. And let it do what it's going to do. Because it's a living word. And when it goes in, into the ears. And it enters the mind. It's going to do what God said do. Or it's going to do what God wanted to do. You say, well, Brother Ellis, I went and I preached the word and, and I told it like it was and nobody came to cry. Well, that's okay. The word did what it was supposed to do. He said, but they wasn't saved. Well, they wasn't destined to be saved. Don't you worry about who's going to be saved and who's not going to be saved. You just share the word and let it do what it's supposed to do because it's a living word. You don't save nobody no way. It's the word of God that saves. It is a living word. It is an eternal word. Let God's word do what it's supposed to do. You go and help somebody, tell somebody, show somebody the way. Now listen. Put your trust in God. Wait on him. 
If God's answer is no, accept it. If he says my grace is sufficient, that means he wants you to suffer through it, suffer with it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you endure it, you will be a better person in the end, a stronger person, suited for God's purpose. And the lesson is yours. You heard the gospel, do you believe it? If so, why don't you come as we together stand, saying words of encouragement. From the source of any bitter or freely dream. Will you come to the fountain? Will you come? It's for you. morning. We move to the part of our service known as communion. The text for the communion will be coming from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. And it reads, For I have received the Lord, the which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which you betrayed, took bread. And when he gave him thanks, the bread and said, Take, eat. This is my body with broken view. This do remembers to me. Let us bow. Father in heaven, we thank you for this bread that represents your body. We pray that we take with clean hands and pure hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it, and mercy me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let, it, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let us bow. Father in heaven, we thank you for this cup that represents your shed blood. We pray that we take it with clean hands and pure hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes the communion. Let us bow and give thanks for the offering collected today. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to all assemble under the sound of my voice. We pray that you would just bless each and every one's situation in here, those that wanted to give but didn't have the means, and those did, did give. We pray that we use this offering for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I can say good morning once again. It's always a joy to see everybody out this morning to worship God in spirit and in truth. We want to thank Brother Ellis for that powerful message this morning. This test is not over. He took his text from Genesis chapter 2 and also chapter 3, so we want to continue to uh, pray for him. I know it's not, not easy to prepare a lesson every week or uh, every other week, but uh, continue to pray for him and and his family, that he may continue to preach and teach God's word for a long time. At this time, we uh, like to uh, just welcome our visitor. If you have any visitors here this morning, we you are truly our honored guests, and we hopefully that you'll come back 
and be with us again. It's always great to have visitors in the audience, and uh, we continue to pray for them also. Uh, prayer requests and announcement. Uh, continue to pr uh, prayers for brother and sister Robert Johnson, sister Brenda McDavid and her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Joshua Geis, brother Michael uh, Johnson, and sister Linda Chapman. Prayer, prayers of healing for Cheryl Harris, Christy McDave, brother and sister McDave, granddaughter, Brenda Gilmore, sister uh, Woods co-worker, Mrs. Deloitte Carter, Dr. Lamar Dash, Mr. Richard Pierce, sister Ziegler nephew, brother Arthur Brinson, uh, sister Holly brother, Ms. Sibis Siv Dash, Ms. Monica Edge here, Mrs. Uh, Katie Roby, sister Sturdy Miles' sister, Mrs. Carol Mack, Ms. Uh, Shaquita Dudley, Brother Eugene William, is, he's in uh, Tomka Health and Rehab Nursing Home, room 321. Mrs. Uh, Helen Jones, Sister Hilda Calloway's sister, uh, who's still living in Florida. She was, uh, home was damaged. Mr. Norman Wilson of Warrenville Heights, Ohio. Brother Lee Wimble. Mr. Uh, Jack Johnson in Moringo County Hospital. That's Martha uh, Shewick, brother. Cheddarway, brother. Prayers of strength and comfort for the Cochran family in the passing of Mrs. Louisa Cochran. The Cox family in the passing of Brother Vincent Cox. The Bennett family in the passing of Mr. Raymond Bennett. Thanks to all the brothers who participated in yesterday's men's uh, meeting. Uh, pray, pray that we continue to do things as always pleasing and acceptable in our sight of the Lord. Uh, fifth Sunday Fellowships, which will be uh, our next Lord's Day, October 29th. Men's bring sodas and water. There's men's bring sodas and water for the fifth Sunday uh, Fellowship on next Sunday. Uh, also, men's uh, work day is October the 28th, uh, 2023 at 9 a.m. All invited to attend. That's for all men to come out and help with the uh, men's work day, which is uh, on next Saturday, October the 28th. The, the Idaho Street Church of Christ is having a gospel meeting. Uh, it will start on uh, 